Okay folks, Beano Black here and basically couldn't hold back. I gotta be careful about clicking because it'll stop the video I believe on recording. Giving you full screen so you see all the time and everything like that. You're gonna see two shadows that basically that will basically nobody can fake you out. You watch the back side of this building. There's a shadow coming across there, and yes, there's another shadow. Now, you're going to see this shadow to the right, and I'm not going to put the point over there because it'll screw it up, but it is basically, now that was what the first object. Now, it will come again. There will be another one, okay? So, no matter what, it's not, if it is, I haven't even checked the times, and there's getting to be so much good footage that the idea that it's not, it's, it's going to be, a, it's just a headache to try to look up all the data and stuff because we can always go back. I'll make a video of, of going back and going to a video and go ahead and go, okay, this was probably this. If it is the moon, okay, because we do know the moon was down there for the eclipse recently and it didn't really do much, okay. But see, as you've seen there, that is the second shadow that came by, okay. I don't think you could miss it in the video unless this was we get the video plays fast. I can play it again, and then I'll go to the photos like I did in the pre previous video. So as you watch the right hand side, the stack on the top of the building will make a snot nozzle. So don't get excited on that. Now that is possibly something, and the idea that at that time at night in a.m. That shouldn't have been the sun. And we know that these are not more than likely. Now, one of these could be the moon, especially since we see two of them. One of them could have been the moon. Okay, But we do see two shadows and two with that we know. It's not a air balloon. It's not a weather balloon. It's not nothing. Okay, It's basically some objects in space. There it went the second time. And now, it wasn't the same object. More than likely, two different spheres. Okay, and then play so fast that we'll play it one more time and watch the building. And I'll check the recording and hopefully I didn't click and stop the video. So you will see something kind of schnoz nozzle right there, but that's the stack up here on this that gives you that shadow, okay? Now there's the first object I believe, and then the sec second spherical object of space will come across the back side of the building again like a movie projection thing that gives you basically mother nature bleeds the truth mankind builds a machine and it's a webcam machine and we get this stuff we catch it there it goes that's the second object and you can't miss it right across the back of the building since it plays real fast here we go again just in case you miss it Here's the first object coming up about where the hand's at. Okay. And there was the other shadows. Okay. There's objects there. Okay, now check out and watch this one come. There it goes. You couldn't have missed it. And we'll have another one that'll come across the building. You can't miss it. Here it comes, I believe. There it went. All right, so let's go to the pictures real fast. Okay, so with the photos, we just go back. And there you go. Totally frozen, and you can see it. And there it goes away. And then since I'm going backwards, you're going to see it go from left to right, but actually in live frames, if you watch the clock, it's actually moving from left, right to left. Alright, so these are the frames and the time, just watch the clock and you'll see that it's two different objects. And there's no hocus pocus, folks. It's basically webcam action. And you see exactly what it is, okay? And that was from their new, and um, so we're going to go to Nehemiah here in a minute. A video just before this, you want to watch the one just before this video. So there's your object, and as we go back through it, there it is. Going to the left like it would be, because yeah, we're going now forward through the shots, and you can see the clock, and you can see the object. All right? So, so make sure you go back and watch these latest videos 
folks, and uh, everything connects up. Okay, lots of stuff matches times and so forth, and matches up all pretty much the same objects, or pretty much all criteria that we were talking about. So, all the way down to the original, where the idea that we basically Beano Black showed you where the idea of the supergiant's main sequence is way bigger and brighter than the sun, and the idea that it wasn't the sun that farted on, I believe, what was it, Jupiter back then? Alright, so watch these latest videos, and the truth bleeds. So, let's just go to uh, Palau up there, and uh, or down there in Antarctica, folks. So basically, you'll see what we've showed you in the latest videos of the tetrahedrons and the object in front of the sun. <laughs> and basically, just I'm doing a mic check there, apologize folks, but we'll just, I'll just zoom the screen in on this as you can see. And, it, and you're going to see some different size uh, as the object goes across. It totally disclaims the idea that, matter of fact, let me go back to that real fast and back up the actual player. You will see that the idea that anybody trying to say that, oh, it's a satellite dome and stuff like that, well, who's going up there and hanging stuff off the satellite dome and crap? Because the idea that you can see clearly these are different spikes and so forth, different objects of this object that's going across. Check that out. You can see that there's a rough terrain to it or a rough something to it. And then there's smooth area. And as it comes across, you can see also other features to it. So is it a smoldering, dying star? Brown dwarf, star, black, who cares the color names you're going to call it? It's objects in space. And as you've seen just a little few minutes ago that we showed you way more than one. And check out the tracks they're going across. And they're getting distances on this stuff by mirroring this stuff on the ground in the snow. And that's why they keep on doing the tracks, getting new fresh tracks, and seeing how big these objects and measuring them with distance that correlate to the satellites that give the distance of this object away. It's very simple to see that they are trying to measure this stuff on the face of that object. Because with the triangulation of what they get for data from the satellites, they will be able to figure features out of mileage from this object to that object to this object on whatever they're looking at. And as I bop back and forth through this thing here, you can see that. And now we will go ahead and blow up and just let the film run. And you will see the tetrahydrons and possibly Reichel Kentaris, Kentaris B, or whatever other supergiants or whatever objects in space that are coming by down there. Okay, so they are doing these tracks to get measurements. Okay, of how large and big this stuff is way out, how far, who knows. Okay. So let's let it play. And I'll just zoom in on size. And then I'll finish up with the disclaimer at the end because there's a lot of action here on this. We'll just keep this going live. And it'll start back up, I think. I'm not even going to quote. You can just look at it and I'll just keep zooming in. And you'll see the tetrahydrons. And this is basically going backwards there. Because this stuff will come out of that. As you can see, the watch the clock, it's going backwards right now. Okay. Going backwards. The object's going the opposite direction. So let me zoom in a little bit more. Okay, that zoomed the clock away right away. As you can see, it's going backwards still. Okay, I hit start. So let's hit start one more time. See, does that get us going forward? No, it's still going backwards. Okay, so anyway, you're going to see basically proof that there it goes and it flops. This gigantic. And I got to play back through that. We're going to the size down. And back we go. Because that's the big flop of the tetrahydrons. And we'll just hit start again and hit play to it. And you will see that flopper come. As the clock goes back, here we go, and there it comes. And you're going to see flop, 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 up, down, bouncing around, and then that object. So we know that this is an object back there. Getting in front of either with Frigal Cantaris B or the sun. 
Now being that 320, 310, but starting up at the idea, is that the sun first hitting the earth? East Coast Zulu time at 1.58 a.m. Really should not be. And there you go, because it'll flop back. I'm going back in time. And check that big triangle out. Pyramid. Going back through history, folks. Who would build a pyramid? Humans here on Earth. Us. By seeing this and trying to replicate it and talk back to the light. And as you can see, see that tetrahydron or whatever up there? So 2210 UTC is pretty much when we start seeing the glow coming in on this. That's not the sun. And then this is good proof that the idea that that's not as we see that giant triangulation of tetrahydron coming across the sky and then that and then the flop from down to up repeat that was down then the watch the clock go forward bam it goes up and then you get your object in the sky so for everybody who says that that's some kind of anomaly of a camera there is your proof dead on that when it first comes in it's just as bright where the hell is your BS of your camera doing that? Because the camera doesn't do that. It goes down there, matches up to whatever object that is that's behind the station, and bam, it comes up. Clock doesn't lie, and the photos don't lie to you. And then we get our tetrahydrons here. We know they're not photo flares. Everybody knows what a photo flare looks like, and these are not photo flares. Straight up the light coming in, bouncing down, bouncing up, bouncing back down, bouncing up, bam, object. So there you go. So now I'll just zoom in a little bit, and we'll play. Matter of fact, I'll go back to it, cue it up, and zoom in a little bit, because you can see the clock that I haven't messed with no video. So here we go. Zooming out. 200% should be okay. You shouldn't have to be worried about the clock anymore. And then here you get a nice, a nice movie from down at South Ant uh, at Antarctica, folks. Here we go. We'll just get beyond the clock. Or matter of fact, maybe we can get the clock in just a little bit. There you go. All right, here. Let's hit play. There you go. And we are playing. Enjoy the flick. And then I'll put the disclaimer at the end, folks. As you can see, an object coming across the building there, too, and from basically in front of, at that time, that would be daylight time, Zulu time, 7 UTC Zulu time. And it's basically the clock's going backwards. And then you realize and know when you see that bouncing back up and down, that there's an object that pops in front of not the sun. That was more than likely Rigel Cantaris B, Cantaris B, or one of the other supergiant suns. The sun is in the supergiants, and the sun does rise below the earth. We rotate to the sun and follow the sun through any universe or galaxy. And there you get a real good view of that whatever the heck. And that's in the evening time, so you know that's not the sun. As we're going backwards through the clock, it makes you realize that this could be sunlight. That would be 1 o'clock in the afternoon British time at 1300, and then you're down to 9 a.m. Legal disclaimer.